Hello folks, it's uh, Ken David Stewart uh, back again this afternoon and I'm going to read uh, another expert, actually part two from uh, my new novel uh, Lake Mariposa, new novel actually, it's a shorter novel and uh, like I made clear on the first uh, video I want to reiterate that it's historical fiction uh, you know and it, it's totally created out of my own imagination and it really, if it resembles any real or actual people, it's not intentional. Now, I want to also make a disclaimer that although this uh, novel does talk quite a bit about illegal drugs and substances, uh, this book is not, is not in any way promoting the use of these substances, far from it. But it was part of the history of the time, and that's why, why I've included it but most of my focus is on the characters in the story. Now, Rick was what was known in the hip community as a straight. A straight was a person who wore a short, respectable haircut. It did not take drugs of any kind. A straight might have tried marijuana once or twice, but decided that smoking dope was not for him. You could smoke tobacco cigarettes and get drunk on beer every weekend and still be labeled a straight. Depending upon their age, Straights would either regularly attend school or hold down a steady job. <coughs> Straights usually did not like the music of Jimi Hendrix or the Grateful Dead, but there were a few exceptions. A straight from Canada might not even be aware there was a war going on in Vietnam, or if they did, they did not see any relevance to their own lives. For 17 years, Rick had told the line. Although he was not a great student, he'd studied hard at school this year and it brought his marks up from C's and D's to B's and even an occasional A. He was only good at one sport, and that was hockey, but he'd excelled as a goalie during the past season. Rick had occasionally gone to drinking parties with some of his teammates and earned, earned a reputation as someone who could really hold their liquor. Rick liked the feeling of being drunk, but he was not an alcoholic. After this season, uh, and did Rick started smoking cigarettes again. He started smoking for a short while when he was 14, but was not by any means a heavy smoker at this point. He didn't even buy his own cigarettes at this point. He pinched a few smokes from his dad's pack. When he got serious about playing hockey again at age 16, Rick gave up the habit. But now that he considered himself retired from hockey, he started to, decide, started to smoke again. He had certainly heard about marijuana, but didn't actually try anything until he was 18. Rick tried it at a party because he was curious and he wanted to look cool. He found that he didn't see what all the fuss was about. Smoking dope hindered his ability to carry on an intelligent conversation at a party, and he was not too happy about the side effect. Rick much preferred beers that made him more loquacious. He was normally a quiet person but he would become quite talkative once he consumed a few beers. With hockey season over and only a few weeks left in the school year, Rick now had some time on his hands. One of the reasons he probably didn't have a girlfriend is he didn't have any time to look for one. Hockey practices and games took up three to four evenings per week. On his free nights, Rick needed to study for his grade 12 courses. He'd made up his mind to be a serious student that year. Rick did poorly in grade 10 and grade 11 and had actually failed two courses for his grade 11 year. He was able to recover his math grade by attending summer school and paying for a private math tutor over the previous summer. That left Rick one science credit short, but his faculty advisor informed Rick that if he took a geography elective, he wouldn't need to retake grade 11 physics. Rick felt like he needed a fresh start in his academic program his hard work and diligence to his studies had paid off. If he took a correspondence course over the summer, Rick would be on track to graduate from high school with the rest of his peers. From his conversations with Misty, Rick had learned that Memorial Park was the place to be if you wanted to meet counterculture people. One hot summer afternoon, Rick walked downtown to buy a new record at a place called the Record Room. Rick still had a paper route and he used his extra money to keep up his music collection. He was thinking about buying the first album by Jimi Hendrix in the experience. He had heard one of his favorite local bands perform Purple Haze, the second single release from this album, and decided that he wanted to hear the full LP. After he purchased the album at the record store, he felt someone tap him on the shoulder 
on his way out and say, Excuse me, man. This was the first time anyone had called Nick mad. Rick turned around and saw that it could only be what was called a female, a hippie, or a, or a flower child. He had previously only seen the flower children or hippies on TV or in magazines. This girl definitely met the stereotype. Rick would estimate that she could be anywhere from 14 to 17 years old. Hey man, do you have a cigarette and a little spare change, she asked. Rick happened to have a pack of sweet capital cigarettes on him and did have change left over after purchasing the Jimi Hendrix album. This must be what the hippies meant by spare change. Rick laughed and said, sure. The young girl had long blonde hair and freckles, although she appeared to have missed a few meals. Rick still found her to be attractive. Would you like to get something to eat? There's a Salbury house about a block from here, and I'm buying. Rick couldn't believe that he found the courage to say this. This was like asking a girl on a date, and he never had any success for this with this in the past. There's nothing more shattering to a young man's ego than rejection from a female. When a young man hears, no, I don't want, wait till I flip the page, no, I don't want to go out with you. It's like taking a heavy punch to the abdomen. The air is sucked right out of you. To his delight and amazement, the flower child said, Yeah, that would be very cool. Can I get a smoke from you now? Okay, I'm going to cut it there for today, folks.